Hello guys, welcome back to another lecture on uh, Basics of Mechanics lecture series. In the last lecture, we discussed about uh, area of moment of inertia for an arbitrary cross section. We also discussed parallel and perpendicular axis theorems. In this video, we are going to see some of the common cross sections of beams in engineering mechanics and uh, we are going to calculate the area moment of inertia for these cross sections. So let's dive in. The first cross section for today is a circular hole punch, which is nothing but a solid circle with a hole in its center. In our example, the outer diameter is 30 mm and the hole diameter is 10 mm. Before starting to calculate the moment of inertia, it is always the best practice to calculate the centroid of the section. Uh, for those of you who don't know, centroid is the center of mass of the section or for simple understanding, it is the point on the section on which the entire section could be perfectly balanced on. Now for a circle, its centroid will be exactly at its center. So now that we found the centroid, we can analyze further. If you see the section, we have two circles, a bigger one and a smaller one. To manufacture a section like this, we would make a solid circle with the outer diameter and then punch a hole at the center of the solid circle. This exact step can be implemented to calculate the area moment of inertia as well, where we find the moment of inertia of the outer circle and then subtract that with the moment of inertia of the inner circle. So the moment of inertia of outer circle along its centroidal axis is given by, let me represent it as I of O is equal to pi divided by 4 times R power 4. I represent here capital R as the radius of the outer circle and similarly for the inner circle the mo area moment of inertia is given by pi divided by 4 r4. So to get the area moment of inertia of this circular hole punch we need to subtract ii from io. So the moment of inertia i for this section is equal to I O minus I I. So if I derive this, I would have pi by 4 small r power 4. So the capital R is 30 divided by 2, which is 15 millimeters and small r is 10 divided by 2 which is 5 millimeters. So if I substitute this both r's into our equation I would have pi by 4 times 15 power 4 minus 5 power 4 this would give me pi by 4 times 50,625 minus 625 then I would have after solving this the area moment of inertia for the circular hole punch is equal to 39250 millimeter power 4 so this will be the area moment of inertia of a circular hole punch so for a simple section like this where you have two circle one within the other where one represent the hole and the other as the solid space you can calculate the moment of inertia of entire solid space and then subtract the moment of inertia of the, all the holes that is present within this solid. The second section we will be discussing today is a C-section. C-section beams are commonly used in brackets, holders, construction frames etc. For our example I have assumed the dimension as given here. With the width and height of the flange will be 50 mm and the thickness will be 10 mm. Like I said before, before we start to calculate the moment of inertia, it is always best practice to go ahead and calculate centroid of the sections first. For a simpler shape like a circle or rectangle, we can calculate the centroid easily. But for complex shape like this, we need to do some math. To begin with, we need to break the section into regular shapes. So for example, let me split this into a rectangle section 1 and this another rectangle section 2 
and this one be section 3. So the breadth of this rectangle will be 50 minus 10 40 millimeters and similarly for this as well the breadth will be 40 millimeters. Now that I have three rectangles it is easy for me to calculate the centroid of these rectangles individually. Having said that let me mark the centroid for each rectangles. So for a rectangle S1 the centroid will be exactly at the center and for S2 it will be somewhere here at the center and for S3 again this will be in the center. The next step is to get the x and y coordinates of the centroid. For this I am going to assume an imaginary axis along the edge of the section like this. So this will be y axis and this will be the x axis. Now I am going to write down the x and y coordinates for each rectangle. So let me draw a nice table to write the values down. So the x coordinate for the first section S1 will be 30 which is the distance between here and here and for the y coordinate this will be the distance between this and this this will be 45 and similarly for the section S2 the x coordinate of the centroid will be 5 and the y coordinate will be exactly at the middle of it so this will be 25 and for section 3 we have 30 as the x coordinate value and 5 as the y coordinate okay we have the centroid coordinates next step is to write down the area of each rectangles so for s1 the area will be 40 times 10 this will be 400 millimeter square and for s2 the area will be 500 millimeter square and for s3 this will again be 400 millimeter square okay so now we have area as well with area and centroidal coordinates of individual rectangles we can calculate the centroid of the entire section using this formula so using this formula we are just adding the product of the centroidal coordinates with the respective areas for each sections together and finally dividing them with the overall area of the section. By doing so, this will leave us with the coordinates of the centroid of the entire section. Makes sense, right? So let's do it then. We need to multiply the x centroidal coordinate with the respective area first. So multiplying 30 and 400, we would get 12,000. And similarly for section 2, we would have 2,500. For section 3, it's again 12,000. So similarly, multiplying the y coordinate with the area, we have 18,000 for the first section and 12,500 for the second, 2,000 for the third. So the next step is to add up all these columns. So first of all, we need the entire area of the section. So we need to add 400 plus 500 plus 400. We would have 1300. So adding up all the CXAs, we have 29,500. And adding up all the CYAs, we have 32,500. So to get the X coordinate of the centroid of the X entire cross section, we need CX is equal to, is actually the ratio between CXA divided by the entire area. So 29500 divided by 1300 will give us 20.384. Yeah. Similarly, the Y coordinate of the centroid will be CY is equal to this value divided by the entire area. So 32,500 divided by 1300, we will have 25. So the centroid of the C section lies at 20.38 distance from the Y axis. That is then this is 10, this is 20, so somewhere here along this line. And CY is 25, so exactly at the middle of the, this. So we can assume that the centroid of the C section will be here. 
Good. Now that we have calculated the centroid of the C-section, let's move on and uh, try to calculate the moment of inertia. The best way to calculate the moment of inertia for this kind of combined section is to calculate the moment of inertia of the individual rectangular sections using parallel axis theorem and then adding them all together. What I mean by this is that simply by adding the individual moment of inertia of each section together will give us the overall moment of inertia. So I total will be equal to sum of the moment of inertia of section 1 plus sum of moment of inertia of section 2 plus sum of moment of inertia of section 3. And remember we have to do this for both x and y axis so that we get the moment of inertia along x and moment of inertia along y separately. So starting with x axis let me calculate the moment of inertia of the first section S1. Since the section S1 is at a distance from the centroid of the C section uh, we need to use the parallel axis theorem to calculate its moment of inertia. So I S1 X is equal to I X1 plus area of the section X1 and the square of the distance between the centroid of the individual section and the entire section. So this is the parallel axis theorem, right? So let me substitute the values. I X is the moment of inertia of the along the centroidal axis. So this will be B H cube divided by 12 plus area D square. So substituting the values I get I S 1 X is equal to 40 times 10 cube divided by 12 plus 400 times the distance between this and this will be 20 millimeters so 20 millimeter squares. So solving this we will get I of X S 1 X is equal to 163333.33 millimeter power 4. Yeah. Similarly for the next rectangle section 2 Let's calculate the moment of inertia. I S two X is equal to I of X square X two plus A D square. And again substituting the values, we will have ten times fifty cube divided by twelve plus area is five hundred and the distance between the centroidal axis is actually zero. Now if you see the centroid axis of the section 2 is passing through the entire uh, is passing through the centroidal axis of the entire section so the distance will be zero so you can cancel this one out what we have is i of s to x is equal to 104166 also for the third section s3 we have i of s3 x is equal to i of x3 plus a d square. We will have after substituting all the values we will get the same moment of inertia as the first section because yeah obviously if they look similar and they are symmetric to each other so 16 3333 .33. Okay, now that we have the individual moment of inertia of each sections, what we need to do is we need to add all these three moment of inertia to get the entire moment of inertia of the C section. So let's add this, this and this. So I total will be I of S1 X plus I of S2 X plus I of S3 X. We will have 43,833 millimeter per 4. So this is the area moment of inertia of the C-section uh, along the x-axis. Let's now repeat these steps and try to calculate the moment of inertia along the y-axis for the entire 
C section. So like for the X moment of inertia, the Y moment of inertia is also given by I total Y for the C section is equal to I S one Y plus I S two Y plus I S three Y. So we need to calculate the moment of inertia along the Y axis for individual section and then add them all together. So I of S one Y will be I of y1 plus a t square using the parallel axis theorem. So putting the values into this equation we will have 10 times 40 cube divided by 12 plus area is 400 times the distance between the centroidal axis this and the centroidal axis this. So we need this distance. We need to subtract 30 minus 20.38 whole square. So this is actually the difference between the x coordinate of the centroidal axis of the individual section minus the x coordinate of the centroidal ax uh, axis for the entire section. So solving for this we will have 90320.31 millimeter power 4. So repeating the same step for the other two sections we will have I of S2 Y is equal to 122499.5 and for S3 we will have 90320.3124. Millimeters per four. So now we have to add these uh, moment of inertia of the individual sections together to get the moment of inertia of the entire section like before. So I of total Y will be this plus this plus this which will be 303140 point one two four eight millimeter power 4. So this will be the moment of inertia along the y-axis for the c-section. Let's move on to the third and final section. We have an example with i-section. The dimensions for the i-sections are flange is 40 millimeter wide and uh, 10 millimeter in thickness and the height of the section is 40 millimeter. This example is also similar to the one which we discussed before. Like in C-section, we have three regular shapes combined together to form one I-section. So here as well, we need to divide the section as individual rectangular shapes like this. So let me consider this section as the first one, A1, and this one as A2, and this is section 3A3. Three, three. Okay. Then we need to calculate the centroid of this I section. For this, let us bring our nice table back and calculate the values. So the area of the first section A1 is 40 times 10. This will be then 400. For A2, this is 20 times 10, then it will be 200. For A3, this is again 400 millimeter square. And the next step is to calculate the centroid coordinates for each of this section. So let me mark the centroid of the individual sections first. So for the section A1, this will be at the center of it. For section A2, at the middle. And section A3, this will be the centroid. OK. Now to calculate the coordinates of the each centroid, I need to consider a reference axis. So let this be my reference y and this my x reference axis. So for the first section the x coordinate will be 20. In fact for all the sections the x coordinate will be 20 right. So all this distance are the same. So 20, 20 and 20. And for y I have for the first section this is 40 minus 5 I will have 35. And for second this is exactly at the middle so this will be 20. And for the third, this is 40 minus 35. So this is this will be 5 then. 
All right. So the next step we need to calculate the product of the centroidal coordinates and the area. So CXA for the first section will be 3000 and for the second section this will be 4000 for third this will be 8000. Similarly for CY we need to multiply this and this. So by doing that I will have 14000 for the first section. For second it's 4000 and for the third I have 2000. Okay, so to calculate the centroid of the entire I section, I will have my formula back. So for this formula, I need to add the entire CXAs and CYAs and divide them by the total area. So the total area is 400 plus 400 plus 200, which is 1000. And CXAs, when I sum them up, I will have 20,000. CYAs, this will be 20,000 as well. Okay, so the centroid of the I section will be CX is equal to CXAs divided by A. This is the overall uh, sum of the areas. I will have then 20 millimeter. And similarly for CY, I have CYA divided by A. This will again be 20 millimeters. Yeah, so let me draw the centroid of the entire I section first. So X is 20 and Y is 20 as well. So this is where the centroid of the I section lies. So if I draw an imaginary centroidal axis along this I section, we have the centroidal axis for the I section here exactly at the middle. So what we need to do is we need to repeat the steps as we had done that for the C section. In fact, we have to calculate the moment of inertia of each rectangular section with respect to the centroidal axis of the I section and then add them up together. So let's do it. Cx is equal to 20 millimeters and Cy is equal to 20 millimeters. So I of x is equal to Ia1x plus Ia2x plus Ia3x. Ia1x is equal to bh cube divided by 12 plus a d square. So substituting the values I have for this term 3333.33 plus area will be 400 times d is the distance between this and this. So that will be 15 squared. So IA1X will be 93,333.33 millimeter per 4. Similarly, IA2X will be, after substituting all these values, I will have 6,666.66 and IA3X will be 93,000. 333.33 yeah now that I have the moment of inertia for each individual section I need to add them all to get the moment of inertia of the entire section so let's add this this and this we will have I total along x-axis as 19333.32 millimeter per 4 So that's another example of how you can calculate the moment of inertia of the entire complex section with respect to the x-axis. Now let's repeat the same and calculate the moment of inertia along y-axis. So for y, I total y is equal to i of a1y plus i of a2y plus i of a3y. Similarly, i of a1y, we're going to apply the parallel axis theorem, i of y1 plus a d square substituting the value of the dimension in the parallel axis theorem we have for i of a1 y 53,333.33 and this is i of a1 y for i of a2 y we have this for this section 1,666.66 
and for i of a3 y we will have 53,333.33 millimeter per four. Now similarly adding all these individual moment of inertias we will have i of total y is equal to 10,800 or rather 10833.32 millimeter per four. Yeah, so that's it for today guys. I hope this section was useful. I hope you understand uh, how to implement the parallel axis theorem for complex sections like I and C sections and I hope you find it useful. So yeah, so that's it for today and uh, I hope you enjoyed the section. If so, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. I will meet you guys again in another video. So until then, bye bye.